Yes. They just keep coming in waves. I've lost count of how many I've defeated. Before I realized it, even the sandstorm had stopped. Hey! Here comes another wave! <laughs> Leave this round to us. I got interrupted earlier, but now I have something to take my anger out on. <laughs> it's been quite a while since I've seen the flame main in action. I'll leave these to you, then. I'll be sure to put on a good show. <laughs> Let's go! Huh? Huh? Teamwork is trick! Ring cutter! Into the wind! Huh? Here comes another ring! When are they ever gonna let up? Creatures stopped appearing. Was that the last of them? What we fought just now was probably the aftermath of the sandstorm. So we should be safe for the time being. Well fought, everyone. No injuries, I hope. Huh? Who are you? Ah, my apologies. I haven't had a chance to greet you yet. I had my hands full taking care of the village's elderly and children. I am the chief of Aru Village. Everyone usually calls me Uncle Anpu. Sir, I am also originally from the desert, but I have not been back for some time now. May I ask if such sandstorms are common? I can't say they've always been common, uh, but recently the storms have become increasingly severe and frequent. Besides sandstorms, we also occasionally get earthquakes. Uh, according to an investigator who stayed in the village a while ago, these unusual natural phenomena are related to the withering of Ermensol. Hmm. Another effect of Ermensol's withering. So, Ermensol's withering causes withering zones in the forest, and sandstorms and earthquakes here in the desert? Everything in the natural world is inextricably connected to Ermensoul. These regional symptoms can indeed be a reflection of Ermensoul's present state. <sighs> Everyone in Aru Village needs to take good care of themselves. Uh, speaking of which, why haven't I seen a single village keeper since I got here? Village keeper? Who are they? Village guards like Candace? Does your curiosity know no bounds? Village Keeper is how Aru Village refers to mad scholars, exiled here by the Academia. Most of them are scholars who lost their sanity after a period of training in the Avidia Forest. The Academia believes that their crazed mutterings may have a negative effect on the psyches of other scholars. So, they're forcibly exiled to the desert. Though if you ask me, it's all a boatload of nonsense. Alas, that's exactly what we've been trying to investigate. One by one, the village keepers have been mysteriously disappearing without a trace. But no one in the village has ever seen them leave. If you're planning to stay around the village for the next few days, I'd appreciate it if you could keep an eye out for them. I've had encounters with those people in the past. I'll see what I can do to help. The Matra are the ones responsible for their exile. Now that you're no longer with them, are you trying to alleviate your guilt and atone for your past sins? <laughs> I'm fascinated by how you think. Mock me if you will, but if you are guilty, I will eliminate you, regardless of my position or identity. Oh, you're the former General Mahamatra. You must be an expert in these kinds of investigations. Thank you for your help. Is it because you're reminded of Hapasia? Oh, these poor scholars. First they lose their sanity, now this! We need to help get them back home safe and sound. But, uh, is it really a good idea to tag along with Sino? You seem like you really don't trust him. I'll be grateful for the assistance. <laughs> no doubt you will do a better job than some of my former subordinates. Let's start by finding a spot to share what we know so far. Huh? 
Although I've sent myself into exile, I'm still doing essentially the same things as before. Do you still have any questions for me before we start our investigation? One of my former subordinates told me that this title has its origins in a strange incident. The Academia has long exiled mad scholars to Aru Village. A mysterious phenomenon exists here. When mad scholars first arrive, they are as incoherent and deranged as before. But, after spending some time here, they invariably begin to calm down. Initially, the people of Aru Village greatly resented having to take in the Mad Scholars. But a strange incident one night changed that. Aru Village was struck by the strongest earthquake in living memory. Seeing buildings on the verge of collapse all around him, the then chief of the village was preparing to take everyone to safety. Suddenly, he noticed a mad scholar crouching in a corner, caressing the ground with his hands. A soft, green light radiated from him, like a divine glow against the backdrop of night. Despite the powerful tremors that ripped through the ground that night, all the houses remained upright, almost as if they had grown roots reaching deep into the ground. In the end, not a single building collapsed, and no one was hurt. After that, the people of Aru Village treated the Mad Scholars with greater kindness, and began to refer to them as the Village Keepers. A soft green light? A Mad Scholar protecting Aru Village? Hmm... What do you make of it, Traveler? Paimon thinks so too. Actually, Sino... Do you know if any of the Mad Scholars continued to wear their Akasha Terminals at Aru Village? In theory, they would continue wearing them so the Academia could still monitor their activities. With that said, the main Akasha system would no longer have any interaction with them. Oh, no wonder! Everything makes sense then! Add in the fact that they calmed down, it was probably Nahida who calmed them. If you are able to draw a conclusion from this one story alone, then it appears you possess much more information than I do. So, what do you make of the story? Really? Lesser Lord Kusanali. Hmm. What? You don't believe us? Lesser Lord Kusanali was definitely using the Akasha to give her power to the Mad Scholars! No, it's not so much that I don't believe you. I'm just struck by your reasoning. Lesser Lord Kusanali, the current Dendro Archon, is she really active in Sumeru? The Academia has always placed far greater importance on the late Greater Lord Rukadevata. They've more or less ignored Lesser Lord Kusanali, and I've never had any reason to doubt their views. In addition, I've never heard any stories about Lesser Lord Kusanali and her deeds. To me, she might as well have been a god that never existed. No way! Nahida definitely exists! She's a... How should Paimon put it? She's a good Archon who's kind and wise. Even if she says weird stuff sometimes. I've spent many years interrogating criminals. So I can easily tell when someone is lying. Good! Then you should know that we're telling the truth! That look in your eyes... I've never seen that from a liar. You two really must have met Lesser Lord Kusanali. How can this be? To think. Our Archon has been amongst us this entire time. Alright, now it's our turn to put our skills to good use for this investigation. But easier said than done. Especially since we don't have any leads. Hmm. Maybe we can start by knocking on some doors. Excuse me. Are you here to help me find my grandpa? Huh? Who are you? By the sounds of it, a resident of this village. My name is Isak. You'll help me find my grandpa, right? Is your grandpa a mad scholar? Hey, don't say that. Grandpa is just grandpa. Why do you have to call him that? It's not like he's a bad person or anything. <sighs> the person you're referring to is not a local. Yet you are. 
Why do you call him Grandpa? Grandpa is just Grandpa. He is my family. I, I heard everything you said to the village chief. Please, you gotta take me with you. I, I wanna find my Grandpa. I, I swear I'll help. I won't be a nuisance. Ah. Uh. So you're the one who was eavesdropping on us around the village chief's house. I was planning to go out and take care of whoever it was. But I had a vague feeling that they didn't harbor any ill intent. Whoa. Oh, uh, Haven wasn't kidding about Matra having sharp senses. Sino, he's just a kid. All he wants is to find his grandpa. Let's find a way to help him. Sorry. I was only listening in because I wanted to know where grandpa went. Honest. If you don't believe me, you can ask Miss Candace. All right. But first, let's confirm the facts with Candace. back already we just wanted to confirm something with you do you know a boy by the name of Isak? <laughs> i had a feeling he'd go looking for you huh you knew this would happen yes although he tried his best to stay hidden i still noticed him eavesdropping outside the window he really wants to get his grandfather back Isak's parents were both Aramite mercenaries who rarely returned to the village after finding employment in the city. He was raised by his grandfather. Unfortunately, it was only a few years before his grandpa passed away. Isak was still very young at the time, so various families in the village took turns caring for him so he could survive. Later, an elderly mad scholar arrived at the village. Isak thought the scholar bore a striking resemblance to his grandfather, and thus often spied on the man. However, the scholar was unkempt in appearance and incoherent in speech. Although Isak referred to the man as his grandpa, he was afraid and didn't dare to approach him. One summer night, the oft mumbling and bumbling grandpa suddenly calmed down and seemed to become more lucid. He even noticed Isak hiding in the distance. So Grandpa walked up to Isak and patted him on the head. He even took Isak to the entrance of the village, where he patiently taught the boy the names of the stars and accompanied Isak until he fell asleep. The next morning, Isak woke up and wanted to go find his grandpa again, only to realize his grandpa no longer recognized him. However, even so, Grandpa retained his calm expression. It's said that those who saw the scholar claimed he no longer appeared to be crazy, but appeared to be living in his own world, almost as if he were sleepwalking. Isak was thrilled that his grandpa was able to find peace and would follow him all the time, asking him things like, Grandpa, want me to take you somewhere fun? Or, Grandpa, could you tell me stories about the stars again? All this somehow just makes Paimon feel really sad. It seems like they both deserve so much better. Perhaps. Nearly everyone who lives in the desert has some form of hardship or regret. But even so, we must still continue on with our lives. It's also my reason for fighting. I must continue to protect this land. Hmm. <sighs> Maybe the people have always had a considerate god watching over them. Huh? What did you say, Sino? No, nothing. As long as Esau keeps his word and doesn't get in our way, we can take him along. Perhaps you are more compassionate than I gave you credit for. Please accept my thanks on Esau's behalf, Sino. It's you guys! We've cleared everything up! Let's go find your grandpa! Really? Wow! Thank you so much! Yeah! Alright. Let's ask the local residents some questions first. <laughs> 